Welcome to Yes Catholic, where real people share their real stories and discover God's grace at work in their lives. I'm your host, David Patterson, and every week we bring you inspiring guests who share how they came to say yes to Jesus and his church. Let's dive into their journeys of faith and see how grace is transforming lives in our world today. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Yes Catholic. Really excited tonight to welcome Augie and Grisano. Welcome, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your story. Man, I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you for everything you do, David, by allowing people to share their story, you know, and giving people a voice and a platform. I'm so thankful to have the opportunity to share mine. So excited for our conversation and just to hear how God's been moving in your life. But why don't you share a little bit about yourself before we dive into the rapid fire, get to know you more. My name is Augie. I am 29 years old. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, primarily, but I spent like half of my high school years in Dallas, Texas. I now live in Melbourne, Australia, and I make a lot of content and a lot of different types of stuff, I guess is what I've been busying myself up with the past few years. Well, let's get to know you more with the Rapid Fire Icebreaker Challenge. I'm sure you've done this before. Let's tackle it. Here we go. Describe yourself as a kid in three words. I'd say energetic, hopeful, anxious. Are you a morning person or a night owl currently? Currently a morning person, but I am naturally a night owl. Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Pause time. Just hit pause. Like, you know, like the movie Click. Like, I just wish I could just like only have the pause button, not the other stuff that like messed up everything. (laughs) Just a pause and a play button. Go to order at a coffee shop. A flat white. Go to short prayer. Uh, I'm going to go the Our Father. If you could have coffee with any saints, who would it be? Papa St. Padre Pio. Confirmation saint. Pray, hope, and don't worry, right? Yeah, that's it, man. Okay, last one. If you could ask God one question, what would it be? How can I serve you better? That's a beautiful question, man. I ask that on a, on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, on, on an hourly. On an hourly <laughs> on basis. An hourly basis. <laughs> like, Lord, how can I serve you better? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, you flew through the rapid fire. Let's uh, let's begin with the opening prayer, and then we'll have you share your story. Awesome. Man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for my brother, Augie. And Lord, I just thank you for the ways that you have moved in his, his life. Lord, I thank you for his yes. And God, I just pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us in our conversation. Lord, we open wide the door of our hearts to you. And Lord, I pray in a special way for everyone listening who will just listen in the future. Lord, I just pray for your blessing upon them. Just pray for your peace, Lord. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. St. Padre Pio, please pray for pray us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, brother, let's dive right in. Where's your story begin? It starts with just sharing that, that I did grow up in a very Catholic environment. You know, like as, as a child, I was, you know, brought to youth group, uh, was very involved in parish life, you know, like, like as, I, as I reflect on my journey as, as a young Catholic, as somebody who was just always going to church and was always a part of the, the youth group, sometimes I look back and I question how much of that was just like a social aspect. And it was just a place that I knew that I could kind of, people had to be nice to me because they were Christian. And we were moving around a lot as a family. And so any time that we like, you know, moved, I had that element of, oh, I'll just like connect with the youth group. And it was more of a social thing for me. And my faith was just kind of hit with the practice of just being double minded. Ever since I was about 13 years old, you know, I would claim the faith, yet I was exposed to pornography and marijuana at about that age, 13, 14 years old. And I'm clean now and God's really showing me, you know, where, um, you know, you know, where, where my heart needs to be. But like this entire journey has just been stricken with just double mindedness and, and saying one thing, but really doing another. And that kind of followed from 14 years old, all the way to, to going to, to college. And it was around that time, like I just was pretty confused with what I wanted for my life and where I was going. and. My dad is a Catholic speaker, and so I just decided to go that route as well of just trying to be an artist and be a speaker and, you know, trying to constantly refine my desire to do so. Like, why do I want to be on the stage? Why do I always want to be in front of the camera and all that stuff? And it, and it really is like 
it's less and less so as I as I continue to grow and as I continue to do so. And I pray that God still uses, you know, the efforts and the time that I've spent to like master the craft of us of writing a song or, you know, learn how to jump behind a camera and create content. But it was very ego driven and it was very just wanting people to accept me and just to tell me how awesome I was and, you know, to gain that, you know, that that social acceptance. And so, you know, around like 20 years old, I, I like stopped studying and I came to Australia to serve with an organization called Youth Mission Team Australia, which was an amazing experience. And, you know, with all of this, you know, like I, I still can find God still working through my life and giving me gifts, even though I didn't deserve them through this struggle of, I don't know, just my heart being half in, half out with this faith and really walking it. But the best and the most amazing gift that I have been given was meeting my wife. You know, that year we we were serving, you know, I flew out to Australia and, you know, I was I was doing this whole year. I was going to go and I was going to be speaking in schools and I was going to be like, I was going to spend that time, like write some music and just, you know, hone in on my craft of just being a speaker and being a songwriter. And, and, you know, I met the best person for my soul, the best human for my, for my soul that I've possibly have came around. And that's my wife, Emily. I just looked up to her for her hard work ethic. You know, I was somebody who kind of, I always was scared of hard work. I feel like I kind of had the spoiled mentality of, of just being like, oh, well, someone else should do it because I deserve more. And then just to see that, like, this woman, it just serves and loves and works so hard. And I was like, man, like, I need that in my life because, like, I need to I need to be more like that. And, you know, like, her purity, I already had lost my virginity. And I've already gone through that, through that, just that journey of drinking the world's Kool-Aid and thinking that purity wasn't it. And I got really, really hurt on the other side, you know, like my heart was hurt from feeling like I gave something away that I'd never be able to give back. And this woman was just incredibly like pure, like she saved herself for me, for her husband. And it was something that I was just like, you know, wow, like, I'm just so grateful. And I was also just so amazed to see how she was able to love with such less fear than what I was, you know, and so, you know, meeting her was was huge, you know, and, and so that's why I'm over here now. You know, I saw, I met this girl and I was like, wow, like this is somebody who's really gonna help me get from A to B. And maybe in that, in that mind, I was like A to B, you know, like success in business or this or that. But really, I know God is like, nah, A to B of becoming a saint too. And first and foremost, we've been married six years now. We have three children. You know, there has been times in our marriage where, you know, I had to be really honest with her and, and I wasn't entirely like, you know, honest on the day of that, uh, you know, when we got on the altar to tell her that, you know, I didn't tell her that I was still struggling with, with pornography. I didn't tell her that I still had this massive like addiction to, to drugs and to alcohol. And it was really painful for her, you know? And I remember the first time that I really like opened up about, you know, my, my struggle with pornography still, I had this like extreme excitement because I thought like I finally did what I was supposed to do. Like I, I confessed and I got that off my shoulders and it was like out of the dark, but I didn't really love her in that moment and see that it just completely shattered her entire existence and her view of, of me as a person. But I was like, I did it. I confessed. Woo. And she was like, yo, like this really hurt. And I think that maybe my reaction to that was, was more so that I don't know if my heart was truly sorry. I don't think my heart truly understood like the gravity of what this does to a marriage, you know? And I just really think that that was, that's just been like my lack of trust that Jesus is going to be the one that's going to, that's going to heal that side of me, you know? And, and he's the one that's going to be the solution and the comforter to, uh, uh, of my soul. And I've been working with Icon Ministry for about a year now. You know, I, Icon is founded by Father Rob Galea, who's amazing man, you know, the best boss and hopefully the last boss I'll ever have. I think being in this environment, what's really helped me a lot to just grow in holiness is this job has forced me to be around people who are really walking it. And that's where this double-mindedness 
just kind of started to tear. And it was like, well, you got to choose, you know, like I'm in this role now at Icon Ministry and there's no hiding. There's, you know, we have a Catholic priest and we're doing Catholic things every day and kind of put in this place where it's like, well, you know, I love this job and I loved this work and, and all this stuff. And I really didn't, I couldn't think of anything else that like I want to be doing besides, you know, the stuff like that I get to work on here. But then I was just kind of put in this juxtaposed position where it was just like, are you going to keep being double minded and, you know, being half in, half out? And so, you know, it was maybe painfully at first, but just slowly having to just decide like, okay, I can't live like this anymore. And man, it's just been such a journey. I think through being around people who who really walk it. Um, so I have an example of like, okay, it is possible, has been really, really helpful. And I also think, man, like actually diving into the word and actually diving into the sacraments has really led to this massive boiling point where I just really feel the grace of God just kind of cut the ties of those things in my life. And I just think growing closer to how Jesus loves me and how good he's been to me, there's there's a, a, a bunch of factors. Like Father Rob, one time um, we were doing this like, we were we were filming all this these masses and there was like Father Rob was given a, a homily and he was saying, Hey man, like you have Jesus inside of you. Like if you still feel like you're addicted to something, whether it be like smoking, whether it be like I don't know what it is. And it just kinda it kinda felt like, you know, while he's talking this, he's just kinda peeking up behind the camera, <laughs> like felt like it was very much like for me. It felt like he was talking directly to you, right? Yeah, yes, he did. Yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. We've never talked about it. But right. it felt like it was like, okay, like this is this is for me. And he just said, you know, to pray for for freedom from this. Like like walk in the freedom that Jesus offers you. And and I never get images, but while I like after I received the Eucharist, I went and I kneeled down and I prayed and and I felt like at first I saw it was like it's like the, there was these ropes tied against my hand. And it was like bringing me forward. And it was kind of like, you know, like that, that scripture of, you know, one day um, someone will grab your hand and take you where you don't want to go. And it, but I just kind of had this image of it was God just kind of like gently pushing me forward. Like, hey, come on, like I got something cool for you. But then in the back, I saw this like this black like arrow spear that was just like going through my back and then just like wrapping around all my organs and just like squeezing and pressing. Oh, wow. But as I like, prayed in that moment i just saw this like water come down and like just like the thickness and in the hold that this like darkness had on me that was just like literally trying to kill me from the inside out just started to kind of deteriorate and and i walked away from that thinking like okay like i gotta stop smoking you know like like my lungs and this and that conviction yeah yes and i went to confession yeah. And like like the next day. And honestly, I've just been walking in freedom since, man. And that's wow. just kind of like my story of just somebody who was just super lukewarm. Like when I really look back, I was just just a lukewarm Catholic who says it, you know, says that they go and go on Sundays and go just enough, you know, to be like, hey, like, no, I'm 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 fitting in in this social construct. Sure. But then still trying to fit in into the world's social construct. And I've tried, I've, I've touched the stove enough of what the world has to offer to realize that I choose Jesus and I choose, Amen. I choose holiness. Yeah. I don't know. I hope that, that made sense chronologically, yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's my story. It was brutally honest. And I think that a lot of people relate to it in the fact of just struggling with, right? Like the, the world is trying to bring us closer and we're trying our best to to draw closer to Jesus, but the world is also saying, hey, come over here, you know? And I think I talked to so many people who are like, how do I actually be all in for Jesus? Do you have any thoughts on that of, of like what's helped you? Honestly, I think it's just by, first of all, your time. Things really, that feeling of, of hearing God's voice and like being led to repentance and everything honestly just started with me being willing to open up my Bible in the morning and just like yeah, start to pray, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, I, I just think, yeah, giving them your time. And, and now like the, the roller coaster wave of choosing him has of like, being like awesome and like, whoa, this crazy experience, like it's died out. And now it's just like, I'm just walking it now. And, and honestly, I, I, I think it's just, figuring out like what turns your heart away from him 
And, you know, like, why is your heart not, not fully in? And, you know, for me, I realized that I, I, I put a lot of people on a pedestal that shouldn't be, or, you know, opinions of, of people and, and certain things in my life, or maybe they're good, but my heart is actually certain aspects of my heart that God wants are actually directed towards like the desire to be an artist, the desire to have like the following or to have, be like accepted by this or that person and this and that. And, and it's just, it's just being aware of that. And then however painful it is, you know, just repenting and turning back to God. It's so interesting you talk about this because I actually, you kind of talked about images, right? And with my spiritual director, I was, I was kind of being led through this time of prayer. And I used to have a cottage growing up and there was a dock with a, a beautiful lake. And immediately I kind of had this image of having like one foot on the dock and one foot on the boat. What immediately came to me was, was the idea of double mindedness, right? And Jesus was in the boat and was calling me, but there was like one foot on the dock, kind of like one foot on the world, one foot on the dock, you know, and just kind of making that decision of like, I'm just going to get in the boat, you know, and then just asking Jesus to give you the grace to just be all in. It was a powerful prayer. But if I'm being honest, right, like I, I prayed that with all my being. But it's like, you know, Luke 9, 23, pick up your cross daily and follow me. It's like that daily decision of like showing up, even when you don't feel like it. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard. Yeah. And with addiction, you know, as well, like just wanting to be comforted, like I cut marijuana and nicotine out like at the same time. And it's just truly like going up to the like the Eucharist and just being like, OK, I go to adoration and I go, you are my everything, you know. And so there's days where I have to run to that instead. Yeah. And I run into the adoration chapel and I just go, well, I choose you, you know, I, I choose you despite the discomfort, you know. Yeah, even for me, I mean, in university, like I had a I had a really rough drinking problem where I was drinking like three, four nights a week before I gave my yes to, to Christ. and. Even after I gave my yes to Christ, yeah, I was falling. Yeah, I was falling back into it, you know, and I was begging God to, to take it from me. Mm. And it wasn't until I had told myself like a thousand times, "I'm not going to go to a bar. I'm not going to get drunk." And what did I do? I went back to the bar and I got drunk. And we were like walking home, and I didn't even realize where I was, but I was walking up the steps. And I, and again, like I said, I had already given my yes to God. And I was walking up these steps and I fell flat on my face and I looked up and I didn't even realize, but I was on the property of a Catholic church. Wow. And the conviction mm. when I realized where I was, mm. that I broke down. And it was kind of like, that was one of the moments, right? Of like, I can't keep doing this. Yeah, man. Like I need to be all in, right? But it's a journey, I think. You know, I know all things work together for the greater good of those who love him. And I don't know... Um, why I had to go through those things. But what I do know now is after falling on my face so much and making the decision now to get up, my heart is so like ready for the all in choice because like, I don't know. It's like my heart was just led. I don't know. It's like roaming around in the desert and just choosing the wrong thing over and over and over again and over and over and over again. And now it's just like, okay, I get it. <laughs> like, this is not it. And I'm all in now because it just, it's not been working. <laughs> I think too, right? Because God is in the business of bringing beauty out of ashes. And so the fact is like, even our falls, the Lord can use to help us realize that we actually can't stand on our own, but it's only his grace that will keep us standing. It's like, even our falls, the Lord can teach us humility in that, which is kind of bringing good out of it, right? Which is not fun, but it's, it's, it's not, <laughs> I mean, trying to pray the litany of humility, right? Like that's not an easy prayer to pray. Oof. But how powerful of a prayer it is, right? Just to, to ask the Lord for, for humility, it is. you know, that's how you. <laughs> well, as I heard uh, St. Augustine, I saw a quote the other day, it was to grow in holiness, you need first humility, second humility, and third humility. And just so you know, there is more besides humility, but the first three are humility. Wow. It's a good quote. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's I mean, true. Yeah. God is so faithful. What has helped you in the midst of, you kind of spoke about like mental health and addiction. What's really helped you in the midst of, of those challenges? I think finding healthy outlets, you know, like I am 
more and more aware, especially after the experience that I shared in my testimony, that there is a, a very real spiritual element to like what I was experiencing. And there was times where I just felt like, oh, this is just extra mean, like this, this, this season of struggling. But that being said, going to the sauna, like working out, choosing to eat healthier, just making better choices. And instead of running to unhealthy things, you know, to soothe my pain, I kind of have an arsenal of a few, like I have like five or six health. Like I can go for a walk. I can go to the gym. I can go to the sauna. I can go to daily mass. Like just make, just continue to just build up an arsenal of healthy things. And, you know, I always keep in mind that, yes, it is, it is a spiritual walk. You know, like we're spiritual beings living in a body, you know, and so there is a spiritual element to it, but there's just some very practical things you can do as well to make the dip not so intense. Yeah. No, that's really good advice. I was thinking just kind of came to mind about the fact of being a father and a husband. You have three kids now. I'm just curious, like how being a father impacted your relationship with God. Man, the other day, one of like my biggest fears, like I literally went and learned how to say if like my kid chokes, like I did, I took a class on like okay. how to do it because it's one of like my biggest fears. And, and so I learned, you know, this is what you do. If they're not responding, turn them over, start pounding on the, on the bat on their backs and stuff like that. And I've never had to use it until like a couple of weeks ago where my oldest willow, you know, she just all of a sudden looked at me and she just was choking. And, and I just was like, I like was freaking out, man. And then I like went and I did everything I was supposed to do and, you know, praise God, like it got cleared, but I like had like, like a panic attack, like afterwards and it was like freaking out and i had to like go upstairs i walked upstairs and i just like went down on my knees and i was just like god i just love my kids man i just love my kids so much like please <laughs> like like please like help me take care of them and and it was like in that moment god was like that's how much i love you but like even more like even wow. more than you know and i wow. just think like there's just so many moments like that like when i, I have two girls and then now i've I had my first son you know he's 10 months old now and you know, it's just something so special, just like holding my son and, and thinking about how God gave his only son. Like, dude, I, I would never <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Get out of here. And so it's just the love that I have for them just shows how radical his love must be. It's amazing you say that because the very first time in adoration, a priest actually challenged me to ask that question. Like, I want you to show me how you see me in adoration. And immediately he showed me my kid. Wow. You know? And he's like, the way that you look upon your child with love, that's exactly how I see you. Wow, man. And it was man, just like a total game changer. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't even fathom it, you know, like that's something I need to sit with more and more, you know, just seeing God as father, you know, is, is it something that I, I haven't really reflected on a whole lot, you know, and there was a, like, if we're talking about images, you know, like, I don't get like, again, like, I don't get a lot of images. I, there was that image that I gave you with the arrow. But there was another one when actually I decided to like throw away my day, <laughs> like okay. get, get rid of nicotine. There was like, I had an image of God, the father for the first time where it was weird. It was like, I was just praying and I was reflecting on, you know, I was just, I don't know. I was, I was just praying God like, okay, like, you know, should I get rid of this too? You know, and the answer was yes. But in that moment, I just kind of like saw this, I don't know, I was like on a beach and I wanted to like hug God. And then I actually wanted to like go on a walk and like hold his hand. But then I was like, this feels weird, dude. Just feels weird for me because we're like eye level. And then God was like, okay, how about this? And then I like shrunk to like a toddler, like in, in the image. And then I was like maybe the size of like my daughter. And then he was like looking up at me and he was like, how about this? And then I was like holding his hand and I was like, when we were walking. And that was like, I, honestly, and then it just kind of stopped there. And I've just been sitting with that. I just realized like, man, I really need to like view God as father more. And I'm just really thankful that I was kind of given that that like distinction and that image of like, Hey man, I'm your dad too, you know, and just how much you want to protect your kids and how, like what you were saying, how, you know, how you look at your kids, how I look at you viewing God as father's very healing image for me. Have you ever reflected on the footprints poem? It sounds so familiar. Like the, there's the two in the sand yeah. and then it's like, Oh, but I've been with you. Look like that. I've, yeah. I've heard of it. So his life is stretched completely across the sky and there's two sets of prints in the sand, but, when the man looks at his life and sees the worst moments of his life, he only saw one set of prints, right? So to him, he's kind of like, you left me in my worst hour. 
Like, where were you? He basically calls Jesus out and Jesus responds with the reason you only saw one set of prints in the sand is because those were the times when I was carrying you, that I was holding you so close to my heart. Right. And uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but just that idea that like he is he's carrying us in those moments of of those trials when we feel so alone, which is beautiful. And I got to say, too, man, like this morning was so interesting as I was working on the graphics for the the scripture verse. Right. And and the Lord brought that up for me. It's like it's got to be a beach with footprints on the wow. sand. Yeah, I posted it today. So I thought it was that's pretty cool. Just, Great. Uh, well, that's cool. That's kind of confirmation for me. You know, I'm like getting confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> we just getting confirmed. <laughs> Come on, Holy Spirit, let's go. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Praise, bro. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah no, it's no. good. Good to hear that. Crazy how the Holy Spirit works. Last question uh, that I always love to ask everyone that I that I have uh, share their story, and it's what is your hope for the future of our church? Man, I would love for all of us to be under one roof. You know, not like a million different denominations unity. Um, and everything. Yeah. Unity. Yeah. I think just like worshiping or, or, or I guess uh, unity and just a, a newfound love for the Eucharist. You know, just what would the world look like if we truly believed in like presence of the Eucharist? And every time we went to mass, you know, if every single heart in there wasn't wasn't just in tune to like, yo, this is actually Jesus coming into this room. Yeah. You know, how different would our world be? And yeah. so it's crazy spiritual reading and how it just makes it come alive. You know, when you go to mass soon after and it's like, it's truly Jesus on the altar right now. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's something that I'm just hoping that I understand myself. And I was, I was honest with like, I was doing an interview for work or something with somebody who just was like, I just, when I just go up, I just am in awe of the fact that I'm about to, receive Jesus. And he said something, he was like, you know, when Forrest Gump says, I'm not a smart man, Jenny, he was like, he was like, he was like, I feel like that's why I go to mass. You know, it's like, I'm not a smart man, but that's why I go to the Eucharist because that's, they say that's where the grace is. And I was just in awe of like him. And I just had to be honest with myself. And I was like, dude, like I'm 29. I've been Catholic like my whole life. And I don't get that yet. Like, I don't get that walking up and being like, wow, this is Jesus. And like, I'm on that journey now, you know, of trying to understand it. And um, I just think the more that we do, the more powerful it can be in, in our lives. Yeah. And, and recognizing the fact, too, that we are all on different journeys and the Lord speaks to us in very unique and, and different ways. Right. Like that image that the Lord gave you with the water pouring over you and just setting you free. Like that's that's what the Lord needed to show you for you. You know what I mean? And so just kind of trusting that the Lord is with us and speaking to us and in the details, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Well, on that note, brother, I just want to thank you so much for your yes uh, to Jesus and his church. It's been such a gift, man. I was, I was looking forward to this, honestly, just to to be able to turn the tables. Cause you asked me to share my story. I'm like, all right, it's time. (laughs) We're going to have you share yours. So. Well, I'm so thankful, man. And honestly, I'm a little like, I have a hangover of the choice from just being like, I'm going to be extra vulnerable. You know, like this is the first time I've shared this testimony. And I don't know, I just felt like it was good too, you know, because I, I want to set in stone what God just did for me in my life. Well, man, I just want to thank you for, for yeah, being vulnerable. And you're the real deal. And the fact of like, listen, I don't have it all together, but I want to be all in for Jesus. And I think so many people are going to listen to that and be like, me too, man. <laughs> and thank God I'm not alone. Right. Because a lot of people are, are trying. And I think that's what the Lord asks is that we just keep trying to get back up and keep walking when we fall. People want to connect and learn more about Icon Ministries. How can they how can they do that or connect with you? You can go to Icon Ministry, you know, on on Instagram. Um, We if you play Roblox, we have a a video game called Medicine. That's yeah, it's um, it's just really great. You know, if you have kids, it's just awesome to play that game with your kids and just break open ideas or just conversations about God. Um, you can find me at sir dot a u g i e on pretty much all platforms, and I've released some music, um, you know, in the past. And I don't know if that's kind of I don't know. I'm just gonna be creating stuff. I'm gonna be speaking. I don't know if it's gonna be music. I don't know if it's gonna change. But if you like the music, you're welcome to go check it out and um, just kind of subscribe to the journey. And they can check it out by going on Spotify, Apple. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, available on all platforms. Um, you'll definitely hear the 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 walk of 
changing, you know, closer to holiness and being a little bit farther away from holiness <laughs> to moving towards holiness. It's kind of all documented there. Yeah, man. If if you like it, you can check it out. Awesome. Well, do you want to close us in prayer tonight? Yeah, man. Well, thanks again, man. No, nah, no worries. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we just pray that you just come to anyone who says yes, says yes to you and says yes to the faith. And we just pray that you build them up, you encourage them, you empower them. We pray for people who have already said yes and are walking and maybe they're in a season of complete, utter joy for that decision. Or maybe they're in a season of growth and of of needing you know, Jesus to carry them a little bit and to, um, you know, help them just solidify that yes even more. We just pray for them too. And uh, I just pray for everyone who's listening that um, they just grow closer to you today. And um, I just thank you for Yes Catholic and for David and in their ministry. Just pray it reaches as many people as it possibly can. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, brother. Really appreciate you. No worries, man. Thank you. All right. God bless. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy this episode and want to support our ministry, please share it with others, post about it on social media, and leave a rating and review. To stay updated with the latest stories, follow us on Instagram at yes.catholic and visit our website at yescatholic.com. If Yes Catholic has made a difference in your life, consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash yescatholic. A big shout out and thank you to our current patrons for all the prayers, support, and contributions that help us reach thousands of souls around the world every week. Let's remember the words of St. Peter. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. You have a story. Don't be afraid to share the good news of how Jesus has moved in your life with a family member, friend, or colleague. Give Jesus your yes every single day and witness the ripple effect of the gospel. Join us next week as we continue the journey right here at Yes Catholic.